Hello, this is your host, Christina from Savvy Radio. Thank you for joining us for our Heartbeat of the World video series, where we're bringing you some of the top experts around the globe to talk about some of the greatest challenges facing our country and the world, and what we can all do to make the world a better place. Today, we're joined by Leon Lagothetis, a global adventurer, motivational speaker, and philanthropist. It wasn't always this way. He was a used-up broker in the city of London, and he felt uninspired and chronically depressed. This all changed for him when he watched the inspiring film, The Motorcycle Diaries. This launched him on his own adventures. Today, he shares some of those adventures and his latest TV show and book called The Kindness Diaries. Visit today, leonlargothetis.com. Hi, Leon. Welcome to Savvy Business Radio. How are you today? Doing very well. How are you? I'm doing fabulous. I'm super excited to have you join us today. You are joining us for our Heartbeat of the World segment, where we're going to touch on some of the great crises or challenges affecting not only here in the United States, but abroad and all across the world. And uh, you've been doing amazing work spreading the kindness, getting people in touch with themselves and, and spreading kindness throughout the world. And you have a very unique story on how that came to be. Share a little bit of that backstory with our audience. Yeah, sure. Um, I used to be a broker in the city of London and I um, was very depressed. No real sense of purpose, no direction. Mm -hmm. And I stumbled across the movie, The Motorcycle Diaries, which is a romanticized version of Che Guevara traveling around South America, relying on kindness. Mm. And it was something about that movie that really touched me. Um, and I realized there was another way to live. And I, I didn't have to live behind the desk. I didn't have to live the way other people wanted me to live. And I could, uh, I could change my life and hopefully in the process help some other people. So I quit my job and uh, started to travel around the world um, mm. and did it in many, on many occasions, I did it on kindness. Yeah, and that's fascinating. Right now, you have uh, you have a number of books. You have Amazing Adventures of Nobody, The Kindness Diaries, which are also on Netflix right now. You have uh, seasons. I've watched uh, there are thirteen episodes so far, um, and then you also have Live, Love, Explore, Discover the Ways of the Traveler, a roadmap to the life you are meant to live. What was it made you think that hey, I should just like go out there and, and travel the world. What was it that was the aha moment that led you to believe that, okay, this is where I need to go or where I need to be at the moment? Do you know, it was really, there was a, a feeling I had in my heart that was like, wow. And my soul felt awakened. And that was really what made me uh, take the plunge, let's yeah. say. It was like a, a, an emotional reaction that I had to, to living the way I was currently living yeah. towards the way I wanted to live. Yeah, but it, it takes time for some people to discover that. And I think travel is one such way for you to reconnect with people and realize different ways of living and being. We all are generally the same at our core, aren't we, Leon? What have you discovered in your travels? Uh, that, that's a beautiful point. And, and that's really the, one of the greatest lessons I've learned on my journey is that ultimately we are all the same. You know, yes, we may be unique. Yes, there's elements of difference. But at base, we are all the same. Yeah. We simply just want to be seen. Mm. We simply just want to be loved. We simply just want to be heard. Um, it doesn't matter what country you're from. It doesn't matter what skin color you have. It doesn't matter what religion you are. You, at base, simply want to be seen. And it, it was a beautiful lesson that I learned. And maybe I wouldn't have learned it had I not traveled the world. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things and the reason this segment came, came about is we got a number of feedback from our audience members that they were so frustrated with the way things were going across the world and in the U.S. with a lot of animosity, polarity, and they wanted to see change. And I said to my audience, I sent out a, a, a survey saying, where do you see the issues that most concern you? What came back was a tolerance and understanding for your fellow citizens, uh, education. And so for you, uh, seeing what's, what's plaguing the world in here, what do you see as our number one challenge in the U.S.? And what would be your solution for it? Wow, that's, that's a, you put me on the spot with that one. Um, look, I, I'd say that there are many, many challenges out there. 
Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'll stick to what I know best. And, and for me, the, 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 one of the biggest challenges is how we treat ourselves mm -hmm. and how gentle we are to ourselves mm -hmm. and how compassionate and empathetic we are to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because what I find is when we are gentle with ourselves that, and we are kind to ourselves, it kind of overflows and we can then go out and spread um, compassion to the world and to people around us. Wow. Uh, you know, I think it starts from one person and that is how you show up in the world. And if you show up in the world with, with kindness and I show up in the world with kindness, people are going to be um, affected in a positive way. And if hundreds of thousands of people show up in the world with kindness in small ways, mm -hmm. it makes a big difference. It really, really does. Wow. Leon, this brings to mind for me, I was very miserable in corporate. And I remember people saying that I was so anal that they would say, you come to work and you act like everyone around you is a machine. I was on this task or, or vision to, I don't know, accomplish something, get to VP status, that somehow my life would be grand if I became a VP of some company. And then another, another friend of mine said that, you know, people used to tell me in corporate that I was mean and vicious. And so I think it's interesting that you mentioned it starts with loving yourself and being kind to yourself, because when you're not kind to yourself, you're most likely not going to be kind to others around you. Is that what you've discovered? Absolutely. And, and it's, it's sometimes easier said than done to be oh. kind to yourself, to show compassion to yourself. In many ways, I would never allow other people to treat me the way I've treated myself. Um, and uh, that's really a starter. You know how when you get on a plane, they say always put the oxygen first on yourself and then on, on your child. Mm -hmm. And that's an important thing because you can't really be of service to others, I think, if you can't be of service to yourself. And yeah. like I said, it overflows and, and you just, it's just about coming from a place uh -huh. of heart centeredness as often as you can, not perfectly. Uh -huh. I don't do it perfectly by any stretch of the imagination. There are days where I'm pissed off. There are days where I, I'm like, Oh my God, I don't want to be kind. I don't want to come. I don't want to be compassionate, but that's okay. Because when I do that, I'm like, mm, okay, there was a, pl a, a time where I wasn't in a good place. How would I have, turned out differently had I shown a little bit of compassion to others or to myself. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting because my family background, they, they came from Germany and they were very work oriented. It was kind of like in my, when I came home from school, my parents said, what grade did you get? I said, I got a B and they said, why wasn't it an A? Yeah. And so it, our, the way we grew up was you always work harder and harder and harder. Once you work hard enough, you'll finally be happy. And so I got to a point that even when I left corporate, now what? What do I do with myself? And I found first I would come and I would meditate and go for walks. And I felt, I felt quite simply that I was wasting my time, wasting my time, because really I should be doing something positive with my time. I should be working or making great good in the world. But as you said, sometimes it takes taking a step back, being kind to yourself and maybe redefining what you think life should be. Absolutely. And I, I do want to share that there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with working hard. You know, you know, you now, I believe, work really hard doing what you love. Um, absolutely. Yeah. There are many people out there that, that, that work very hard and, and we have things like Facebook and we have things like video chat because people have been inspired to go out and do great things. Mm -hmm. um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But imagine if you did that and you came from a place of compassion and empathy. You know, there are certain companies, I'm not going to mention any names, who we all know do, do, do like wonderful things. And there are certain companies that make a lot of money and have a terrible reputation. Um, and it's the companies that we, that we uh, are inspired who go out and, and give back to their communities and, and have an image of positivity that we are even more connected with. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What happened for me, though, allowing me to step back, redefine where I want to be, what, what the, how do I define my life, is what allowed me to actually go out and give great kindness to others and allow kindness into my own life. Because there was a time, uh, Leon, where I could not accept anything. People would say, you look beautiful today. I'm like, nah, no, not me. But now I can even accept kindness to myself where I couldn't do that before. 
Yeah, and uh, it's it's funny because I, I can relate to that. It's yeah. like you give and you give and you give and someone says, oh, you did a good job. And you're like, ah, no, no, I didn't. Don't worry about yeah. it. But uh, it's a very important thing to be able to receive yeah. um, and to be like, okay, you know, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm willing, I'm, I'm able, please, I'll, I'll take it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, it's sometimes not an easy thing to do. Yeah, in fact, it, go on. It, it, it kind of makes us it forces us to be vulnerable. Mm. Um, and when we're vulnerable, we are, it, there's magic, but there's also risk because you're vulnerable. And once you're vulnerable, someone could take advantage. So it's a, it's a challenge. Yeah. And I saw that in your, in your videos of people, when you were traveling about, you would say to them, can I please stay with you for the night? Can you offer your home to me? And, and, and I'm sure not all the time did you get a positive response. That was scary for you, was it not? How did that work out when you first started that? Did you just decide one day, I'm going to go out, not spend money, look for the kindness of others? And how did that work out for you? How did you get through to feeling comfortable with enough to go and do that? Yeah, it was, it was at times challenging. Um, I would be rejected more often than I wouldn't. Um, and it's not easy and it's not fun to be rejected. Of course, I put myself in that situation so uh you know whatever i I received uh, it was up to me um but sometimes it's really important to just go out there and 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 let it be and see what happens um and and being rejected is 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 part of life it's not a good part of life but sometimes it can be you can be rejected and you can learn from it in in a profound way yeah yeah, it's interesting. Did you find that more so being abroad that there was more openness to uh, giving than there was in the United States? Absolutely not. I found America to be exceptionally giving. Oh, wow. It's a, it, really a, an amazing experience. Uh, there was so much kindness and so much goodness, and, and uh, it was a wonderful experience that I had across America, to be honest with you. I mean, I had a good experience across the world. Sometimes things didn't work out. It wasn't always hunky-dory, and it wasn't always kindness. But uh, America has a generous soul. There's no doubt about that. Hmm. It, it is true. I remember way back when I traveled to Spain for a month and uh, we got stuck and the banks closed for four days and I had not planned ahead or realized that we have no money on us. And so we couldn't pay for the hotel. We had no food. And the people who own the hotel said, no worries, you'll come home to our house tonight. We'll feed you. Don't worry about it. And I was, that was the first time where I exhibited kindness from a stranger in my 20s. And I thought, wow, why would you do that for us? And then, you know, and then years later, having people from Spain come stay with me because they opened their door, I opened my door. It was kind of like, and I wasn't even thinking, okay, now I have to reciprocate. It was like, I want to. And uh, so, you know, it's, yeah, it happened that way. And I find not always with the same people because the people that came to the United States, who were Spaniards, were not anyone related to the people that helped me in Spain. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing to give. And sometimes giving is actually better than receiving. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you don't, that's what I say to someone. Uh, some people think, well, I'll give, but with the hopes of giving, uh, uh, receiving back. I think if you really truly give from the heart, you will receive back, but not always from the same method, the same people that you might expect, but just keep an open heart. Now, from your experiences traveling the world, what would you see is the greatest crisis facing the entire world um, out there right now? Uh, look, to, to me, uh-huh. America is, is, has always been a beacon of hope. You know, I grew up in England and I grew up on t- American TV shows. I grew up um, with, 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 with America, you know, America the Great. And um, it does sometimes cause cause me concern that, uh, you know, some of our politicians are, 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 are spreading hate. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- to me, that's the greatest challenge because America is a, is a, is, is a stability in, in, in this crazy world we live in. Yeah. And if we erode that stability and we lose our moral compass Ooh. and we, we lose the moral high ground, then um, I think that is a serious problem. 
Yeah, it is indeed. In fact, one of the things that came back in my essays, I sent out, excuse me, surveys, I sent out to my audience, number one thing that people were concerned with was a moral compass being lost in the country. Um, but I feel, my general understanding is that we, each of us ourselves, can be part of the solution, that we don't have to buy into fear, that whatever we might hear on TV or maybe the news stations, that we can choose to not um, live and be and express fear ourselves. What's your experience? Um, understand. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And I, I do sometimes feel that if we, if we were to watch the news every day, we would think that the world was a terrible, terrible place. Um, don't get me wrong, Batman, but more often than not, good things happen. And uh, if we can concentrate on that and concentrate our energies just on an individual basis on, you know, coming from a positive place and coming from a heart centered place. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, when we're in, when we have pain, sharing that pain, uh, things can can definitely improve on an individual basis and it kind of it's like a wave yeah like a ripple in the pond and i i totally agree, agree with you leon i mean we've interviewed people around the world from bulgaria china um, thailand the united states and there's wonderful amazing people everywhere and we all want the same thing as i've said with other guests we all want to be loved and to love and to have enough food to feed our children to have our children grow up and be healthy happy adults we all truly at the end of the day want the same things so we can come together with commonality instead of looking for the wrong that exists in our neighbor we could really revolutionize the united states and the world i agree i mean look i think there's always going to be an element of uh of bad stuff going on. There's always going to be an element of darkness happening. That's just the way the world is. But uh, as, as Yoda um, once said, I, I'm going to mess this up, this quote, but Yoda made some kind of famous quote, which I've completely forgotten. But basically, he's like, the light will overtake the darkness or something like that. But, uh, and I believe that. I believe that. Not, not in a Pollyannish way to think that, oh, there aren't bad people out there. Oh, bad things aren't going to happen because I that's not the case. Bad things will happen. That's just part of life. But um, sometimes we can take those bad things and turn them into good things. And often if we concentrate on the good things, the bad things may not uh, affect us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, my one friend had said, I don't remember when back, how far back it was, but she basically said, listen, if you go as light into the world and you bring that bright light into the world, what, what happens when you go into a dark room and you turn on the light? Bam, darkness is gone. So if we all individually go out there, be kind to ourselves first, then give kindness to others and show the light, there's no way darkness can exist in the same space. Well, let everyone know where they can find out more about your books and they can go to Netflix and check out Kindness Diaries. Where else can they find out more about you? Sure. Um, so yeah, as you, as you mentioned, the Netflix show uh, is called The Kindness Diaries. And I traveled around the world on a vintage yellow motorbike giving uh, unsuspecting good samaritans a life-changing gift um, yeah. you can find the shows on amazon or any bookshop and you can follow me on facebook and twitter and instagram and i respond to all messages so you just send me a message and uh, i'll respond that's great. Well, again, I just want to thank you. Uh, you're offering a wonderful solution to people. Top being, please be kind to yourself first so you can be kind to others. And then uh, just go out there and get your book. Find out about the Kindness Diaries, Amazing Adventures of Nobody, the Kindness Diaries, Live, Love, Explore, Discover the Ways of Traveler, a Roadmap to the Life You Are Meant to Live, because everyone should live the life they were meant to live here. What's on the, what's on the horizon for you going forward? Are there any new books, any programs coming up? I'm working on uh, traveling around the world on a, uh, in an electric car. Ooh, nice. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with that one. That's fabulous. Well, again, I just want to thank you, Leon, for coming to Savvy Business Radio and sharing on this very important segment of Heartbeat of the World. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. After five years of creating exciting business content with amazing businesses from around the world, Savvy is now creating a new video series entitled Heartbeat of the World. This series will feature experts from around the globe. We will highlight and discuss some of the greatest challenges facing the U.S. and the world. Co-create with us and find out more at bit.ly slash Savvy Patron. 
Savvy Business Radio and runs in syndication on eight AM FM stations nationwide, including iHeartRadio and six podcasting platforms. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or to become a guest and find out how we can help you get your message out in a bigger way, call 732-474-7375 or email Christina at SavvyBusinessRadio.com.